back in 2003, the Ngāti Puru Haora, along with the Problem Gambling Foundation of New Zealand, set about to put a lid on the number of pokey machines in Gisborne. They believed that they had an issue that they could resolve. Now we're talking about 50,000 people in the region, and it's, it's quite a poor area. The number of pokies compared to the population was very high compared to a lot of other parts of the country. It's the damage that takes place as a result of problem gambling. Domestic violence is an issue, child abuse is another issue. I think it's been published well all over the country that children going to school without lunches. If you look at Mormon's Refuge, people have to have accommodation because of domestic violence. I know of people who have sold their cars. I know of one that mortgaged a house to cover their debts. And most of the family didn't know about it. No power, no telephone, no food. All of us working in health have identified that there is a problem with gambling. Rents are not being paid, rates not being paid, children's clothes not being bought, food not being bought. So businesses suffer as well. Everybody suffers. What I'd like is to see not one of those machines in our town. This is about our families, our people, our community. It's not about Māori, Pākehā, whatever. It's about all of us. Previously, the Gisborne District Council had a gaming machine policy in place that made the gambling industry fairly happy. That was when a handful of community groups and services combined their energies to effect a policy change. To not only put a lid on the number of machines in the area, but to decrease the number of machines. In other words, to create a sinking lid policy. Is Gisborne going to become the, the pokey capital of New Zealand? Um, or are we going to say, no, this is not good enough for our people? A lot of them are on benefits, and a lot of them have got a little, a low income, so they want to build it up. There was one pokey machine for every 111 adults in the Gisborne area, which is very high. A lot of other parts of the country, the ratio is more like 1 to 140, 150, which is still too high, but much higher here. Put that together with the low socioeconomic factors, uh, and you can see that this is the sort of area that the pokey industry targets, puts their machines in here because people uh, are desperate for money, uh, there's not a lot of other entertainment around Gisborne, we're very isolated here as well. And um, the pokies were a real recipe for disaster here in Gisborne. The money has gone out of the district, it's been a uh, known factor. The media has identified that too. So just in the Gisborne region alone, that's like $12 million a year is lost. $12 million was the money spent on, on gambling in this district. Also with that report is only $1.5 million of that came back to the community, which I think is not a very good deal at all. Of all the money that has left the Gisborne community via pokey machines, just over one-tenth is returned to the community via funding. A research project revealed that the damage caused by pokies was greater than first thought. Everybody loses. People are not paying rents. They're not buying from the central business district because that money is no longer there. That money isn't circulating in the community, it's not buying school uniforms, school lunches. It's not coming back into the community, let alone going back into the gamblers' pockets. The rest of it's going in taxes, it's going to pay the expenses of the trusts that run the machines, it's going to pay the uh, expenses uh, of the clubs and pubs where the machines are situated. The machine owners are saying they're putting their um, money back into our community, but that's untrue. It's not true at all. The community into which the money is given back is not necessarily the community that it comes out of. Even though money making it back into the community is less than that lost on the machines, some sports clubs and other organisations still look to gambling money for funding. The groups that work with disadvantaged people in the community are always looking for money. There's never enough money for the work that these groups do. And, and over the years, groups like that have actually become quite dependent on poking money. So what often happens as we go around the community is that sports clubs and other community groups doing all sorts of good work say to us that we need that money. The, the trusts that run poking machines are actually critical to our funding so we can do our work. And my answer to that is that uh, the people that they are trying to help are often the people that are losing their money in the pokies for a start. So that often in a poor community like Gisborne um, people will be losing their, their, their hard earned and money that they can ill afford to lose on the pokey machines. The trust will actually be distributing it to sports clubs or community agencies in some totally different part of the country, often a much more wealthy part of the country. 
we're in seeing an increasing trend of groups um, saying that they, they no longer want to have money from the from the trusts because they're taking a moral standpoint um, g given that money is generated from poking machines and the, the adverse effect that, effect that has on society. Um, that's not an easy thing to do because for, for, for many small groups they're dependent upon grants for, for, from those sources and have traditionally been, been so for a number of years. So you have the spectre of some kids who are not from wealthy families going to school without their lunch to buy the boots for the kids in the richer suburbs. We've got to look at the big picture, look at the long term effects on our community and on our society. These things are injurious to society, particularly um, to those most vulnerable in society, some of those, some of the poorest people in our society. And for that reason, they, they need to be very, very carefully regulated. There has to be things in place to ensure that uh, people don't get hurt. One city councillor suggests that the pokey machines are damaging the community in more ways than one. Not too long ago, we had fairs, we had fun, we did creative fun ways of collecting money. We gave as we took, okay, we gave something as we took the money. We keep asking for money by writing out triplicate sheets and every time we do this, and this is my opinion, somebody down the road is putting their pension money into a machine or um, some child is going without or somebody's over drinking alcohol and being abusive and so every time an organisation wants money that money is coming from something that is ruining our families in this region. The whole operation of poking machines has proven to be deeply regressive. Uh, this is largely a tax on the poor and if you follow the funds as we have you see that money is transferred uh, from the women to the men, from the brown to the white and from the poor to the rich. The pokies are are designed to attract the mind and uh, to hold people to the machine. I mean, it's not just about putting a coin and pulling a handle and out comes some money or sorry. There are the lights, there are pictures, there are all these other wing, um, whistles and bells to keep you at that machine until you have spent all the money maybe that has been designed for your family's food. This was the issue we needed to address and uh, because of the stories we've heard uh, and because of the things we knew that were happening within families. When the Problem Gambling Foundation and the Ngāti Pūrōha Ora approached council, they realised there was a reasonable amount of work to be done. The council put a challenge to the Ngāti Pūrōha Ora uh, to come up with some facts about problems caused by pokey machines in the, in the area. And they wanted local Gisborne and, and East Coast information. The council wasn't prepared to accept that Gisborne would be affected in the same way as every other community in the country, they wanted local information. At the time the council acknowledged that it was uh, lacking in local knowledge, um, that it had national information um, but nothing peculiar to this, to this district and they made it clear that if that information was to come to light, um, that there was particular issues for this district, they would review that policy uh, in a year's time or later, rather than waiting the three years that was required by the Act. I think the Council was basically saying we need to know what the actual effects are on people in this district before we'll consider that. We asked if they could just give a year for us to come up with the data, local data, and uh, review the policy in 12 months. The Council essentially put down a challenge to to the um, anti-gambling community, if I, if I, or the anti-pokey community, if I can put it that way, um, to go out there and find some evidence to support what they were saying. They were very passionate in their views about the awful impact that the um, pokey machine habit has on families, but they, at that stage, this is quite on, early on in the game, they didn't really have a, a, an awful lot of factual information to back it up. So the job then was to find out just how bad this was. Uh, so we went around looking for data, what information was available, and we found there was very little. That initiated us to do our research in our area on the, the harm gambling was doing in our area. 